to France and start working on site. There's one more place that Ad wants to show me. The studio gallery space, about 20 minutes drive away. Well, this is my studio transformed into a non-commercial gallery where I like to show young artists, old artists from different backgrounds because sadly as green spaces we have a huge lack of art spaces. So here we've got about 30 pictures around the wall depicting nude female forms. Which artist is this one? Uh, she's Flor Alvarado, part of the collective Identidad Marrón. It's called Brown Identity in English. I, I can show you upstairs. Now this is like a storeroom. So if your studio is also a gallery where you're showing other people's work, how do you get any work done? Well, the thing is, I get to work with the galleries in other countries, so I had this space empty a lot of time. Um, we wanted to, yeah, have another space to come together. It's a huge part of the process that inspired me, that kept me going, you know, into this pool of ideas and feelings and needs. I definitely feed from other artists. I say goodbye to that, leaving them to go back to working on their third hotel. It's now June 2024, and I get an update message from Ad, who's now on site at Les Jardins Suspendu in La Havre, overseeing the building of their installation, that they hope will delight humans and birds alike. It feels really exciting to be here in La Havre. I've been, yeah, almost a month working on site. I have been working with local artists and construction people. The Bird Hotel is about six meters tall. There has been much discussion about where to position in the gardens to prioritize security because of the, of the wind. We realized that the colors were not uh, saturated enough to be bright and colorful and to be appreciated from long distance. So I changed the pictorial design to make it more simple. At the beginning, I was very anxious with the yeah with the opening of the project. I was wondering if people would find it interesting. With this new project, you have this <laughs> always the, like this fear if it will make sense or not. But all the people I, I was talking, they were very excited. It's been really a very intensive <laughs> but great time. Looking at this now 6 meter, almost 20 foot high bird hotel, I can see that the background is more rustic and the colours that dominate are an orangey red, violet and black. And the flowers and petals have gone, replaced by a more circular design, but there are still what could be eyes in black and red. So when I catch up with that by Zoom, I want to know more about that change in colour, how being on site has affected the design. When you site is specific, I'm always thinking to be open to whatever is happening in the space. The difference between a mural inside, outdoors, you have the sunlight direct, and sometimes a lot of light make all the colors more plain. So you need something more vibrant, I think. And I also like that the structure is next to a tree. I like that the tree is making like a companion and it's part of the work and it creates like a dictic actually. That is something that I do a lot in in my paintings. So it's kind of like a painting in real life. In the sunset you have the shadows projecting these lights over the painting and I think it's beautiful. I think it makes it more natural, but also more romantic. It now feels part of the landscape, in a way I wasn't expecting when we were first talking about Zephyrlite. How's it been working with the team in France? Has that gone well? Well, it was a challenge in terms of the language. Not everyone speaks English or not everyone understands my poor 
future <laughs> too. I think the most important part of doing the tower now in the summer is to propose and try to inspire people to think about how we can think art for human and also cities that contemplate every living being. You've been listening to the documentary In the Studio from the BBC World Service with the artist Adam Naliti. The programme was presented and produced by me, Andrea Kidd. This is the BBC World Service, exploring the challenges faced by groundbreaking Paralympians. I'm Dan Parker, I'm a former Paralympic swimmer with a learning disability. Three of them, one in four, portrayed some athletes with intellectual impairment to a Paralympic Games. It's more about not knowing rather than lack of willingness. I want to find out what barriers people face. The next Paralympians, Saturday at 11 GMT. In an hour, the art of air pollution. Meet the innovators extracting deadly pollution from the atmosphere and literally turning it into something beautiful. Engagement rings, art ink, their sustainable solutions are raising awareness whilst cleaning our air. This is the BBC World Service, the world's radio station. World Service, I'm Tim Franks. Myanmar's civil war, we have an investigation into a massacre.